I'm the pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church in Port Elgin, Ontario, Canada. We record our uh, services and they're shown on our website as well as on to Sogging Times online newspaper. So welcome everyone. I see we have some guests here with us today. That's wonderful. You're most welcome. Come anytime. We'd love to see you. I was just thinking this morning as I was looking out at you, isn't it wonderful we're on the top side of the grass? <laughs> so next Sunday, we're having a healing service here. It's in our liturgy. We haven't been able to do that for four years because of COVID. And so next Sunday, we're going to offer a healing blessing around the communion rail. We're also going to have communion uh, next Sunday. And uh, I was speaking to a couple of physicians about this. And they said, absolutely no problem. We, uh, the, the nurses and staff have taken off their masks in the hospitals, uh, if only if they're seeing patients who are in isolation for a variety of reasons. So we're going to have a healing service next Sunday. And just for all those people who want to participate in some healing, they can come and have a blessing. Now, Throughout the summer, the rest of the summer, Adrian and I are going to be playing a little bit of secular music. So we're going to have a little bit of gospel, we're going to have a little bit of Peter, Pete Seeger, um, <laughs> Peter, Paul and Mary now and again, just a few little songs here along the way just to bring in some secular music uh, into our worship. So. Any other questions? August 20th, we're going to do a few gospel songs and bring in all kinds of different instruments because we play uh, different instruments. So, enough said? Yes, Adrian. Um, this, just a quick announcement. This coming Wednesday, um, I'm going to be playing a solo concert in Owen Sound as part of the Noon Hour series over there. It's at the uh, Georgian Shores United Church. Uh, it's at 12 on uh, this coming Wednesday, pay what you can in mission. Um, there's a poster in the hall, just in case you missed any of that. Um, but uh, yeah, love to see you there. That's wonderful. We all know how wonderful we, you play. We are just so pleased to have you as our, as our director of music. And so anyone who can get to, uh, to Old Sound on Wednesday, 12 noon, at? Georgian Shores. Georgian Shores Church. Okay. Wonderful. All right, let's stand and sing this wonderful hymn, My Lord, What a Morning, number 438.
Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock 
I know not one. Okay, um, we're going to uh, say the, the songs this morning. I'm going to read the first verse and everybody else the ones in gold. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to reverse your name. I will thank you, Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. <clears throat> For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The air divides up against me, O God. But you, O God, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your enemy. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Second reading is Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. <coughs> For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory of them to be revealed to us. For the creation awaits, creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected by futility, not of its own will, but by the will of one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will contain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that it is, that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for that, for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We stand for God's opposition. Where then 
did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no. In gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together within the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, and gather the wheat into my barn. <clears throat> then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out his kingdom, all causes of sin, and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, last week, <laughs> We talked about planting seeds, and this week we're talking about pulling out the weeds. The two together, every gardener knows that planting seeds is the easiest part of having a successful garden. It's much more time consuming to weed the same garden, and it's hard work. There's a corollary to that truth. To distinguish flowers from weeds, simply pull everything up and what grows back is weeds. <laughs> Reverend uh, King Duncan writes this. Some of you can relate to one unknown homemaker who wrote, I don't do windows because I love birds and I don't want to run into a clean window and get hurt. I don't wax floors because I'm terrified a guest will slip and fall and get hurt and maybe sue me. I don't disturb cobwebs because I want every creature to have a home of their own. <laughs> I don't spring clean because I love all the seasons and I don't want the others to get jealous. <laughs> I don't put things away because my husband will never be able to find them again. And I don't do gourmet meals when I'm entertaining because I don't want my guests to stress over what they're going to make when they invite us back to their house. I don't iron, because I choose to believe there's a word called permanent press. And finally, I don't pull weeds in the garden, because I don't want to get in God's way. He's an excellent designer. So, we are complex human beings. Reverend Laurie writes this, if you look at a strand of DNA, you will notice that scientists call it a double helix, two strands winding together around each other, connecting in between the contained makeup of the makeup of each person, biological person. If Jesus was a biologist today, I imagine that that's how he might describe the human spirit for his example of human spirit is explained in our gospel today. Complex entanglement of roots, namely two plants growing side by side and whose roots are intertwined. They are rooted together so much that to pull one out would destroy the other. Only the harvest time can be separated and gathered. As long as they are living and growing, both must remain intact. Often we read this scripture as though Jesus were simply talking about different kinds of people, but when we read closely, it appears more than that. He's describing two natures within one human being. Paul says something very similar in Romans as he describes the desire to do good inside 
yet also the sin that is at war against us within our bodies. Jesus describes that every human being has the propensity to do good and to do evil, both wheat and weed. Remember when Doctor, when Pastor Dwight was here, he used to say we had this little devil on our shoulder, and he was doing something. He would say, "You just have to learn how to just knock that devil off of your shoulder." I was thinking about that this morning. The tricky part is that they both they're not connected and grow together at the root of our personality, but sometimes the two can be unrecognizable. Sometimes it's hard to see which one is which, especially in this complex world and in complicated situations. And that's why only God, according to Jesus, has the ability to judge a good plant from a weed in that final harvest. Jesus calls us, instills in us his righteousness and rest when we agree to follow him. And yet sin's roots still lie deep within our hearts and can easily lead us astray, especially when things get complicated. Sometimes they are exceedingly hard to tell apart. In a world, good can mask as evil, and evil can mask as good. Why? Because the human soul is entwined spirit. Now, all of you, for example, know what a dandelion looks like. <clears throat> it's got jagged leaves and yellow flower, and some of you from this area know that you can eat the leaves. You can put it in your salad. It's a little, a little bit bitter, but some people actually do that. They're extremely nutritious, just a bit bitter. But then there's a plant called the cat's ear. And the only difference between it and the dandelion is it has a little taller stem. If you eat it, it won't be good. Here's another poisonous look-alike, which mimics the wild tomato. While this plant looks like it is bearing fruit, succulent cherry tomatoes, it is in fact the very toxic horse nettle. The only difference, if you look closely, is there are some little small thorns. And nightshade can also be mistaken for a wild tomato, but it has a smaller fruit. To make this even more complex, what about the plants that are clearly poisonous, but yet can do both good and evil? One quarter of our medical prescriptions come from plants, but it depends how you use them. For example, foxglove is a deadly if eaten, but it can also be used to treat congested heart failure and swelling. Sweet clover may be used in rat poison, but it's also used to make the blood thinner warfarin. Didn't know that. Rose per rosy periwinkle is extremely toxic if consumed. Sorry, no, there we go. Rosy per periwinkle is extremely toxic, but yet it treats diseases like diabetes and leukemia. Autumn crocus is deadly, but treats gout exceptionally well. And we all know about opium poppies that make morphine to heal as heroin, and they also can make paralyzing darts to harm. Even the grapefruit <coughs> is known for its vitamin C. It can spike potency in certain medications and completely nullify the effects of others. How many of you are not allowed to have grapefruit? <laughs> Quite a few. <coughs> Likewise, we can heal and hurt each other, depending on how we express either the goodness or the toxicity in our hearts. Our words can either harm or help. Our actions can heal or kill. And even our silence can either often 
offer or lift up at a time of need. The quest for rooting out the weeds is endless. All of us have virtues. Here's a story about a man who found the weeds especially noxious in the garden of his soul. Saint Jerome lived between 14 and 1500. He was born to a well-to-do family. He received a very high standard education. He was fluent in Latin and Greek. Very, very enthusiastic about his goals in life. But he had an abrasive personality. He was quite confrontational. He was stubborn and alienated longtime friends. He had a dream one night where he was standing in front of Christ for judgment. Jesus asked him who he was and he said, I'm a Christian. He said, no, you're a liar. Jerome said, and he said to Jerome, where your treasure is, is there where your heart is. Well, Jerome was deeply touched by this dream. He withdrew to a desert and eventually became a monk. He translated the Bible into Latin. He wrote many biblical commentaries. He was a spiritual director to Christians and helped with Bible studies. At the same time, he continued to make enemies because of his blunt, outspoken nature and his sarcasm. He could cut a person to shreds with his cruel tongue. This is an example of a saint who never did master the tasks of pulling out the weeds in his life. And so, is Saint Jerome a good role model for us to emulate? He used the brains God gave him and developed them to become a teacher of the scriptures but he was not able to master this obnoxious personality. He harmed many people and sowed the seeds of dissension. So, as we go forward this week, maybe we could take a look at the garden of our own souls. Are there any vices? Are we doing anything to get rid of those vices? And to be careful of our judgments for others who are also trying their best to navigate their own entwined and complicated life. So, some things to think about this Sunday. I offer these words in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to sing a very uh, interesting hymn. It's called Lead Me, Guide Me. <clears throat> it's beautiful. The choir is singing next Sunday as well, and so we were practicing this hymn this morning. So the choir uh, members will help to lead you through this beautiful hymn. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Thank you. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our body, and the life of our blessing. Amen. We're going to say the prayers. They're a bit long, so please be seated for that. You're in your celebrate the bulletin. They're in the back cover of your celebrate bulletin. Just while we're doing that, Les, I see you're here. Les? What, Les is a farmer, and he, and he farms all his land with these beautiful uh, uh, Belgian horses. He doesn't use a tractor. Didn't you the last part? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me. Okay. I was going to ask him how he separates the weeds from the wheat <laughs> when, uh, at the harvest time. I will ask him afterwards. <laughs> nice to see you here. All right. Uh, prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. O oh God, you call your church to announce the gospel of reconciliation and truth both near and far. Guide your church as it seeks your wisdom and shares it, trusting your spirit, bearing among, witness among us. Hear us, O oh God. You brought forth all creation and called it good. Direct policymakers to protect lands and seas. Bring rain to sun-parched fields and protect areas impacted by natural disasters. Hear us, O oh God. You desire peace among nations and peoples. Guide our neighborhoods from hatred. Watch over police officers and firefighters and teach us to advocate for those who live in fear. Hear us, O oh God. You are gracious and merciful, comforting those who suffer any affliction. In our church, we pray especially for Doug, Ken and Nancy, Bonnie, Jean, Marie, Fred, Gail, Mike, Ron and Sandy, Fred and John, Annie, Cecil and Betty, Gwen, Savannah, Carolyn, Heather, Lindsay, Gloria, Amber, Irma, Marie, Corey and Shelby, Ralph and Chuck and Roland. Sustain your people living in HIV AIDS, provide shelter for all who are unhoused, and release any who are unjustly imprisoned. Hear us, O God. You name each of us as your children. Guide our hospitality ministry to welcome all, our education ministry to equip us for faithful living, and our social ministry to enact the gospel in our community. Hear us, O God. You sent faithful people to proclaim freedom from bondage and to renew the church. Encourage us by the witness of the faithfully departed so that we live into that same hope. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
Let us say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Could you stand, please? You know that there's a gentleman here who is my cousin, but it, how we are related is our grandmothers were sisters. Your grandmother was my grandfather's grandfather's sister. Okay, got it. Grandfather, grandmother, sister, brother. Wow. <laughs> anyway, the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. Please take a moment to share the sign of peace with one another. <laughs>